Yeah, thank you very much. As I said, my name is Kirill. I work as a PhD student and use the Slipping University of Tucson. And today we're presenting a paper about hormonal motions, shared reality of COVID information on social media. It is particularly relevant for me right now since I'm start, uh, struggling with long COVID, so I might be coughing. Sorry about that. So let's start with social media and misinformation about it. Currently, social media is a platform where people can gather news, share, and engage in them. However, due to the structure of social media, cognitive reasoning, and in particular validation behavior is not widespread, which means it is also a ground for false rumors, unsubstantiated, unsubstantiated claims, and so on. This is in particular relevant for health information and to COVID-19 pandemic. At easy cases, for example, regular negative information might slow down the spread of effective countermeasures and from adoption of proper cures. In the worst case scenario, people can introduce even direct harm by, for example, proposing miracle cures that might harm people. It has come to a point that even World Health Organization's general director speaks of it as an epidemic that we have to stop. As an example, with what we are working on the right hand side, you can see an example of falls from a cascade. At the start, there's a person who claims that somebody didn't die from COVID, but instead of stage four cancer, and then uses relatively strong language, asking to stop using it as a justification. And then somewhere along the lines, a person replied with a fact check, in this case from PolitiFact, which debunks this claim. So this would be a false rumor cascade, which we would use in our data set. Then the question is, what drives the spread of false and true rumors and how it differs. Previous research, such as excellent work by Abbasso Yatal, found that false rumors generally spread more viral than the true rumors. Nevertheless, the mechanism by which it happens is currently an open question. And we would like to approach it through the prism of moral emotions, which have been shown to affect the diffusion of information in polarized environments. Here, False news are connected with polarized environment, moral emotions affect spread of news in polarized environments, and COVID-19 pandemic itself has been shown again and again as a highly polarized environment and a fertile ground for the spreading of untrue information. With this, our hypothesis itself is whether or not the reality of true versus fake news about COVID-19 can be explained by the moral emotions they carry meaning the moral emotions in the original tweet that starts the rumor and how it can affect the spread. First of all, we would need a data set. And this one we collected ourselves. We start with a data set of false rumors that have been fact-checked by one of the three websites, PolitiFact, Snopes, or Truth of Fictions. Those websites usually employ independent journalists who check different sources, papers, claims, and so on. We collected every uh, COVID-19 related factors from all of the three sources. Then we move to the rumor cascades. On Twitter, rumor cascade is defined and starts by somebody making a claim. It can be a personal claim, it can be a link to some paper and so on. And we are interested in those that were fact checks. So first of all, we collect all of the tweets that contain links to the fact checking websites. With those, we can now construct a rumor cascade. So we are interested in what these tweets answer to. So we try to collect, now again, with Twitter historic API, all of the original tweets to which we have answers with the link to the fact check website. So those will be fact check rumors. Here, two important points. We are interested only in rumors that were originally not fact checks and that were fact checked along the line, which means if original tweet does contain a link, we discard it. It is not an answer. It is not a rumor. It is now a fact. And second, we remove all of the replies to the replies, since these replies don't answer to the original tweet, and we cannot check the cascade. Lastly, we need to make sure that tweets that we check and study do indeed relate to the original rumors. And for that, we use a machine learning algorithm with universal sentence encoder. It converts both the headline and the tweet into vector representations. And then we can use cosine similarity to compare them. If it's less than 0.4, we also discard that. And with that, we arrive to our final data set with which we can work. Timeline is from January 2020 until May of 2021. Altogether, after all the preprocessing, we have 10,610 cascades with 24 million retweets. And as discussed before, 
uh, file checking websites usually have five point scale from completely false to completely true. We normalize them to three, true, false, and mixed. For the main analysis, we use true and false, but for the checks, we also study the mixed rumors. So now the last thing we have to do before we can analyze it is to calculate the emotional scores. We base it, we calculate moral emotional content for every source tweet in our database using the NRC emotional lexicon. Here, they work with blue checks with emotions. It has any basic emotions, and then diets, triads, and so on and so forth. And from that, we can construct more complex and interesting to us emotions. In this case, we use standard text preprocessing. And in the end, after calculating all the emotions and diets, we conduct, construct two highly moralized emotion scores. This is other condemning emotions and self-conscious emotions. Why those two? First, they are a good way to separate highly moral emotions into two categories. Other condemning emotions is known as hostility triad. So it comprises of anger, disgust, and contempt, and represent disapproval or negative judgment of others. It can be seen as a more proactive emotion since it calls for action. Somebody is doing something wrong. We have to change it, and so on and so forth. As an alternative, we have self-conscious emotions. Those are calming triad. They indicate self-reflection, self-evaluation, and contain shame, pride, and guilt. Those may be seen as a counterpoint to the other condemning since they make us stop and think about our actions, whether what we do is correct, moral, and so on. So it would be reasonable to assume that other condemning emotions would spread, uh, highly polarized false rumors, and self-conscious would make the spread slower. Of course, we checked everything that we did with case study with two trained research assistants. We had 200 tweets from that were more other condemning and 200 tweets that were more self-conscious. Then we asked our research assistants on five-point liquid scale to say whether they are more other condemning or more self-conscious. We had high inter-rater agreement rate, and they consistently said that other condemning emotions are more other condemning than self-conscious and vice versa. Excellent. With this, we can look at our data overview here for the convenience we plotted it along the line, along the timeline for each month. As can be seen, the highest spike of rumors <laughs> goes for the start of the pandemic when the United States declared national emergency. And we have two other spikes with uh, President Trump being diagnosed with COVID and start of the vaccination. Here, interesting point is that despite the highest spike at the beginning, the spread between false and true rumors increased as the time goes by. So now that we understand our data set, we can move to our linear how generously the model. Here we use negative binomial regression, and our dependent variable is a retweet count. It's a number of retweets for rumor cascade, it's non-negative, it's count variable, and variance is higher than the mean. Our main explanatory variables are other condemning and self-conscious proportions of emotional words, and of course the veracity. Here we say that falsehood one means it's false rumor, and falsehood zero is its true rumor. And of course, the interactions between them, in particular between a falsehood and our moralized emotions. And then we also use control for variables that are known to affect the retweet rate, such as followers, followers, account age, media, and verify. Here, important point, since we are using nonlinear models with interaction rates, the effects of explanatory variables are nonlinear. They are nonlinear functions of both the coefficient and the level of the explainable variable, which means we cannot use standard explanation of a change, one unit change in explanatory variable as a change in the mean of dependent variable. Instead, here we can look at the multiplication effect. For that, we first calculate the IRR, instance rate ratio, which is an exponent of our coefficients. Then, we can interpret these coefficients as a natural logarithm of a multiplying factor by which the predicted variable changes given one unit change in the extended variable, holding all others constant. Excellent. Results. We have two main regressions. First is only for false rumors or veracity of rumors and everything that we control for. And here we can see that, yes, indeed, false rumors spread wider and more viral than true rumors. This is, of course, in line with previous research from Fosso et al. and other researchers. 
Then we make a second model with everything. And here, the main output is that both interaction terms with falsehood and moral emotions is statistically significant at 90% coordinates level, meaning that there is indeed a difference in how false rumors spread based on the moral emotional content of the base message. In particular, one standard deviation increase in other condemning emotions for the false rumors is linked to an increase in retweets by 27%. And one standard deviation increase in self-conscious emotions for the false rumors is linked to a decrease in retweets by 23%. Other important point is we have found no such significance for the interaction with true rumors, which means there's also a difference between how moral emotions affect false rumors and how they affect true rumors. In our case, they mostly affect false rumors, which can also be explained by the connection between spread of false rumors and polarization, which is also effective for moral emotions. And then we checked all of, our, all of our results for each of the three topics. Here we used a three-step program. First, we identified clusters by keywords. Then we used cluster analysis, checked it manually, and used the results to train the semi-supervised machine learning algorithm to detect which topic it is. Of course, they are not exclusionary. So for example, it can be both health and politics. So health, health rumors, politics is something about political opponents and other is our catch-all for everything else. So for example, conspiracy theories. Here, the most important point is that interaction with falsehood and other condemning is statistically significant for both health and politics. Data set with other is smaller and though it is not statistically significant, at least we can see that they do move in the same directions. We also checked for verified and non-verified users to verify for people who only get one or multiple cascade. We checked for time, we checked for scarcity, we checked in particular for mixed rumors. So we said, okay, what if mixed rumors are true and what if mixed rumors are false? And in all of the different specifications, our results hold. There is indeed a difference in how moral emotions affect the spread of the fake news, which brings us to our main point. So first, we show that yes, there is a difference in how false rumors spread, and we can look at it through moral emotions. In particular, other condemning are associated with increased speed of spread and self-conscious with the reduced speed of spread. And this is not the case for the true rumors. This is relevant both for theory and practice, since first, there was at least some previous research that looked into morality, but it differs a bit. First, looked at whether we look at moral and non-moral, and moral spread more. Another looked at emotions in replies. And that they said that, yes, if more replies are associated with anger, then there is more likely that rumors spread faster. However, this information is not available at the beginning. Whether here, we, while looking at the starter and the source tweet, we can initially see all of the relevant data and morality data. So this can help identify and hopefully also find a good way to treat the false rumors. And of course, also have educational purposes, and we hope that it will be used in future machine learning applications. But we are an observational study, which means we refrain from making causal claims. However, this is a good ground for the extension of the work. We would be extremely interested to see this repeated in a lab environment, in particular, how people react and how their actions differ to different moralized emotions. And secondly, unfortunately, we cannot fully study deleted tweets. First, we don't know if they were deleted by Twitter or a user, and we have no access to the contents. However, we were able to check which type of deleted tweets there are. And most of them, I think around 70%, were linked to false rumors, which means that, yes, on one hand, Twitter does care about if it was deleted by Twitter, about fake news and tries to combat them. On the other hand, in our data set, still we have the most rumors as false ones, which means that there is still a lot of work to be done, and we hope that our work will help with that. So thank you very much. I will be very glad to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Kirill. You already have a question from Alex Christensen. Yeah. Uh, how do you define true rumors? Oh. Hmm, excellent. So as said, we look, we base- Sorry. 
she continues uh, yeah. i would think that rumors are by definition somewhat not verifiable at the time but maybe it's just a semantic exactly thing. that is absolutely the point at the moment of the writing the person writes them they are not verified this is why what we mean when we say we discard uh, every topic that starts with the verification link and we are looking at rumor cascades which means that it started as a rumor or as a fact that was not verified and then along the lines one of the replies contains the link to the verification sites so for example political snobs and truth fiction we combine them we look at the result that those fact checking news say so if we say it's fake we say okay then this was a fake rumor if they say it's true then it is a true rumor of course we are limited by how they're rated so if they're incorrect that would put a doubt into our analysis but According to research and also our personal checks, all of the three, three sites have very high interagreement, agreement, which means that most likely if one called it true, the other is also called it true. The difference might be in the level, so mostly true, absolutely true, and so on and so forth. Yes, so true rumor is the rumor that was then verified along the line further, and it was said that, yes, this tweet is true, what they say is true, so it's no, in the end, yes, it will be no longer a rumor. However, one might argue that it's still a rumor that because of the previous research that says people not only disregard information that doesn't conform to their beliefs, they may even ignore it. So even if it's uh, proved, people might still continue to spread it. And it's not necessary that they did see that it is a false rumor. Does that answer the question? <laughs> um, That's a fantastic answer, thank you. Always a pleasure. <laughs> And one question from Karishma. I'm curious about how false rumors, moral virality compares with mainstream tr true news versus true rumors. Moral vitality, vitality or virality? Let's assume virality. So mainstream true news. <laughs> to be honest, in this uh, research, we don't mm, discriminate between credible sources and non-credible sources. We do discriminate between verified and unverified users, which might be a proxy for that. And there was no clear difference between how false rumors spread. So for both, there was same effect for moral, for self-conscious and other condemning. <coughs> when compared with true rumors, as said, we don't find significant effects from moral emotions to the true rumors. So there might be other effects that would also be super interesting to study. 